And I would go as far as to say, I think it does the most amount of nothing that it could possibly do. And hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. I hope everyone is ready and all aboard the struggle bus. Toot toot. Because y'all, I'm already struggling, okay? I sat down and I decided for today's video, I wanted to rank some Hourglass with you. Now, for those of you that don't know, okay, Hourglass has some of my all-time all-time favorite products like in a given category i just think that they are like Mwah! like so good um but along those same lines unfortunately they have some things that i think are i don't know how to say this gently like dumpster fire garbage so i thought it would be good to sit down today and rank them for you i believe i have 11 items one of which is mia i can't find it so we're gonna briefly discuss it it has its own little spot in the lineup and um yeah that's what today's video is so i'm gonna go ahead and just get this one right out of the way it's probably Product 11, my least favorite thing I think I've ever tried in the history of Hourglass. Wow, do I loathe, loathe this foundation. This is their Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. I grabbed it in the shade Cream, if that's relevant. And guys, I tried to use this. Oh my God, did I try. I watched everybody else on the internet use it. Raw Beauty Christy, I think, was like obsessed with it. And I think one of the things that she said was like, oh, people are using too much. Like a dot does my whole face. I tried using none of it. I tried using a lot of it. I tried using every dot system in between. But for me, this didn't have like the crazy full coverage that they tried to say it did. This is one of those foundations that as I tried to work with it, I would get so increasingly frustrated that I would just wipe it all off and be done because I could not with this. No matter what I did, I tried to mix it with other items. I tried to do so many different things. And every time I look at the bottle, I just get like really angry because it was just such a waste in every way. And you guys can let me know down below if you hated it or loved it i would love to hear from you but for me the oh, hourglass i expected so much more from you this was just oh my god this was abysmal i'm sorry it it when i was ranking i didn't even have to try i was like what's the what's the worst there's not even a question this 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 <sighs> blood pressure down. So the next thing we're going to just talk about really quick, let's have a quiz. Who knows Paige? What is one of her favorite products in the world? She's wearing one right now. That's right. If you said gloss, you would be correct. And this hurt my soul. This gloss, it is painful. This is their extreme sheen. Okay. Uh, gloss, I have it in the shade Child. And um, this... It, Mm, the level of disappointment is on so many levels. So number one, I'm gonna do a swatch for you, okay? I'm gonna just, I'm gonna give myself a little, little swatchy swatch. A very generous swatch, okay? I'm not trying to set nobody up for failure here, but can you even hardly see a gloss right there? The answer is no, don't even try to lie to me. You can barely see that freaking gloss. I don't know why this is the weirdest consist, like it's almost like if a gloss was a dry oil, like, it's 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 like a paradox in my mind of how this can say it's an extreme sheen there is li extreme what extremely dull sheen did you forget a word in there like i don't understand where were you going with this now just to parallel and like oh Paige, it's the lighting i'm gonna take another gloss this is i'm wearing a little bit of this right now it's the jsc uh gloss in shockwave and i'm gonna take and put just a tiny little bit of it right next to it okay so they're right next door do you see like that's the Jeffree Star gloss. Do you see that? Versus this dull little pile of, I can't, I just cannot. I also hate the consistency of this. It's very, like you take the applicator out and you can wipe, wipe, and you'll clean off the entire applicator and be left with like one eighth of one lip done because there's just, there's no product in it and the product itself doesn't like slather like a gloss. Like a gloss is supposed to be all kind of juicy and it's supposed to just like paint, paint my lips with good shiny shit. And this does not do that. Also really quick, I just found another item that I had to add back into the lineup. So we're up to 12 items. Just so you know, numbers are going to change. So the reason that number 10 is rated so low here um, is because I feel like it doesn't do much of anything. Like it's the, it's the in-betweeny weenie, if you will, of all the products that I think Hourglass makes. And that would be their Veil Mineral Primer. Now, I know some people are just like gasping right now because there are human beings that just live, breathe, die by this. For me, my issue is that... Once I put it on, it does look pretty. Like if I do a swatch on my hand, it looks nice. It gives like a dry down, a little radiance. It looks pretty. But when I put it on my face, not only can I not see it, once I put makeup on, it's like, 
all the benefits of it go away. And it doesn't fill in pores, it doesn't help with fine lines, it doesn't help my makeup wear longer. It just literally does nothing as a primer for makeup. And I would go as far as to say, I think it does the most amount of nothing that it could possibly do. And for that reason, it ranks really low. It's just, there's there's not, you know, good or bad as far as like it's egregious like the other ones or oh wow, it's fantastic. It's just, when, you, when I spend money on something, especially when it's hourglass and it's, so it's more expensive, I expect there to be a wow factor that can at least go through like a light coverage makeup or a tinted BB cream or something. And every time I've worn this, it just doesn't. And I don't know if it's just my skin, like maybe my skin eats it. Um, Cause y'all know I got these big old man pores and they, they're they like Pac-Man, they're just bah, 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 bah. They eat things, I get it. But this just, mm, I cannot. Okay, so product number nine doesn't take a lot of explanation. For me, it's just, I don't think it's worth the money. Um, and I think it's a little bit overhyped if I'm being honest. And that is the Caution Mascara. I know a lot of people love it. And as far as the formula goes, I think it has a nice consistency. I think it builds okay. Um, but I don't think that there's anything about this that's like so over the top that I would pick this over a drugstore mascara. Like if I'm just being real, I think that I get amazing, amazing benefits from whether it's like, um, what's the one? The L'Oreal Original, L'Oreal Voluminous, the uh, L'Oreal H. Wow, I like a lot of L'Oreal, uh, mascaras. Wow. Um, but the L'Oreal Age Perfect, I love that one too. And of course, there's a couple other ones that I love that are high end, a couple more that are drugstore. But at the end of the day, I just, I don't think you need this. Like, I, I, I think if you're going to spend your money with Hourglass, this is just, this isn't it. Like, it's not awful. Again, like some of the other ones, woohoo, y'all know how I feel. But I feel like this is just something that's just a waste of money because you don't, you, you don't need it. Like, you can get a very similar effect for literally a fourth of the price, if, if not less. And I just... I don't think you need it. Now the next product is the one that I can't find and it's just because this entire world of mine is in upheaval for the last few months, but I wanna talk to you about their weird little, their tall little slender ass lipsticks. Guys, those things, I'm sorry, they're really good. Like the consistency of them is great. They have beautiful colors. I'm not gonna negate any of that. Like quality wise, it's good. But the reason that it earned the number, I think eight spot, I think we're at now, I don't even, I can't count anymore, I don't know. But the reason that it is where it's at in my lineup is because for the price, for the amount of product you get, it is like, it is, it is, oh, it's baffling. Um, because I feel like you're paying for the container. There's like a third of the amount of product in one of theirs that there is in a regular lipstick. It earned my spot in the lineup because I just, for, it, it, to me, the price point on that, like their other stuff is expensive, but that one, it's like, so expensive and you don't get a lot. And because they're like a regular bullet type lipstick, you're going to have to reapply them. And realistically speaking, I don't see one of those bullet lipsticks being an investment or an investment that's going to last you some, you know, any great length of time. I think that if it's a color you love and you wear it every day or even, you know, a couple times a week, you're gonna blow through it because you only get this much damn product and it's like this big around. I just, no. Now number seven and six I'm gonna do together because not only do they go together in application, but I feel Feel like they are perfect middle of the pack type items and that would be their brow gel and their pencil. I go ahead and start with the brow gel because this one does for me technically rank one spot lower than this so we'll start here. Um, I think that the brow gel is nice. This is technically their arch brow volumizing fiber gel. Um, I think that the reason that it ranks middle of the pack for me is because it's very much so like a middle like eh. like I, it's not an A or a B but it's also not a D or an E or an F. It's not failing. It's like a it's a standard C, like C, C plus type situation. Um, I think it does a good job volumizing and like lifting up the fibers. But what I find is that they don't keep that, that same like build and lift all day long, at least not for my brows. Um, and that's kind of my main issue with it. I just feel like, you know, for what it is and, and for being a volumizing fiber brow gel, I really wanted to like see that and see the, the look of it last all day. Along the same lines, because we're kind of getting to that point where I'm going to have positives for things. I really like the way that this brow gel looks on more natural type days. Like if I'm doing, you know, light coverage or even no foundation or no real makeup, just a little brow, a little mascara. I love the way that this looks because it gives the most effortless kind of like light fluff. And when it's alone, it's still enough and it looks lifted and it looks present. But like I said before, when it's with a full face of makeup, it doesn't give that same effect. So very in between middle of the pack. I think it's good. Do I think that it's something that you need? No. Now moving on to the pencil, I think a lot of what 
I just said here applies here as well. Um, because this, uh, truth be told, I used the entire pencil. Like, girl, she's gone. There's not even a nubbin left. I used the whole damn thing. And I, I even saved the empty just to do this video because I think the quality overall for this little fella is this little fella. How cute is that? Um, <laughs> so adorable. But I think the quality overall is really nice. It's super creamy. The color is beautiful. Um, I used it in the shade Dark Brunette. For me, the reason that it's middle of the pack, again, is just because for the price for what you can get elsewhere, I don't think that you need it, but I do think if you tried it, you would enjoy it. It also has a nice shape to it. It's kind of like a very teeny tiny oval, which at first I was really thrown off by. I was like, why the hell do I want an oval? Like, no. Um, but what I ended up feeling is that when I was filling in my brow, I actually had a lot more control with that shape than I thought I would because it it, it uh, filled in quicker than just a circle because it's a little bit wider. But because of the, the squattiness this way, I was still able to get all of the definition that I could get with just a standard round pencil. And I just, I don't know, overall, I really, I do like it. I just struggle with like, it's it's not worth the price, um, but it's, it's good. So it's definitely still middle of the pack, very similar to this little guy. Okay, so we've officially entered top five. And as we go forward from here, I'd just like you to think about going forward to number one. I can't wait for you guys to see what I put together for number one because <laughs> you're gonna laugh at me and that's fine. I'm aware that I'm not always connected with reality. So just <laughs> as we lead up to it, just remember, I was a little bit stressing when I when I put this order together. Uh, but number five, guys, this is where we're at right now. And I would like to officially introduce you to the Hourglass Vanish Stick. Now, this is a very, very controversial item. Item. I know a lot of people that like they swear by it, live it, breathe it. Like they would form a cult around this damn stick foundation, okay? They will just, woo, they will smear their whole face covered in it and just live their best. However, there are other people that they wear it, they hate it, they can't mix it, they just absolutely unequivocally think it looks horrendous on their skin. And I'm one of those people, unfortunately, that when I wear it by itself, it looks really, really bad. However, when I mix this foundation in with other full coverage, very thin consistency foundations, it looks beautiful. For example, I used to mix this in a lot with the Dior Forever Undercover. And then in my present day, I like to mix it with a very similar consistency, which is the Catrice HD Liquid Full Coverage. It is such an amazing foundation. It has beautiful coverage and a very similar consistency actually to the uh, the Dior Forever Undercover, but obviously a much cheaper price point. I feel like mixing the two together actually creates a beautiful texture and that's why I like it so much. So overall, is this something that I would rate at the absolute top? No, because I, you know, it is very finite how I have to use it, but for the way that it transforms other foundations that I work with, I had to rate it higher. If you have one laying around and you don't like it, I encourage you to try mixing it in because that might be like the missing little ingredient that works for you. So give that a try. So going into number four, this one kind of took me by surprise. I didn't think I would like it this much, but I'm happy to report that uh, coming in at number four is the new Hourglass Concealer. I have it in the shade Birch, which is right here. It is a freckle light for me, but I still use it, love it, and it works great. Um, and, and I think when it comes to this concealer, I've heard a lot of people kind of go both ways. Yes, I love it. I don't like it. You know, everybody's got their own opinion as with most stuff. But I think for me, the reasons that I love this outweigh the, the couple of things that I'm not a huge fan of. So I'll go ahead and start with what I love about it. Love the coverage. I love the way it blends out. A little goes a long way. So it really does blend well. Um, and it also works really well as an eyeshadow base for me, which is crazy because aside from my Tarte Shape Tape, I haven't had one that I could use as an eyeshadow base in a long time. So something to keep in mind there. Now, along those same lines, the thing that I think I've noticed that could be problematic with this is that it actually has more of a matte dry down. For me, that works okay because I'm more combo skinned. I have oily eyelids, which is probably why I can use it as an eyeshadow base, that sort of thing. But uh, if you are someone that struggles with like super dry under eyes, you, you, you might like it, you might not. But if you are someone that has drier under eyes and you don't like it, that could be why, like I could see that being a problem. But on the flip side, you need such a little amount of it to get good coverage that, you know, I could also see that not being a factor at all. So something to keep in mind, but for me, I have just been loving this. It looks so good and it's really, really workable, which I was impressed with. Like on a day where I don't want to wear any makeup, but my under eye bags are just like, <laughs> 
<laughs> have you slept this week? No. Um, this works really well. So coming in hot at number three is something that I have loved from them for so long. I've talked about them a ton, and that would be the Hourglass Scattered Lights. Guys, these things are so beautiful. I have every shade, and I think they are fantastic. So for today, I grabbed the shade Smoke because it didn't make sense to grab all the ones out of my drawer, but that is the shade Smoke right there. And believe me when I tell you, like I swatch it and I'm like, wow, it's really pretty. You know, a little goes a long way. It looks stunning, but this is one of those products that on, in swatch, it's pretty. On the eyes, it is mesmerizing. The way that they have created a product that truly, it, like, the name of it, Scattered Lights, and it looks like you literally have just lights all over your eyes when you wear it. It's so unbelievably beautiful. And because it's so effortlessly pretty and it's so thin and so lightweight to put on, and it's, it's just such an easy product in general, I feel like it's something that you can use in so many ways. If you want to grab, you know, a color and you're like, eh, I'm more of a one color all over the lid kind of lady. Well, that's fine. You can put a color through your crease or no color if you don't want to. Slap on one of these, you're good to go. It's still going to look beautiful and refined, and you're going to have that oof without doing any work. Or if you want to do this crazy in-depth eye look, you want to have one and just add that little sparkle and pizzazz, you can do that too and it'll still look beautiful. And also one thing I wanted to add is that these aren't like a lot of the other ones, like the, the Tarte Chrome Paint Pots and the Marc Jacobs, whatever theirs are called. Like I have all of them, okay? And I, I love so many of these little, like little potted things that are great. These truly are set apart from the rest in the way that they scatter the light. And I just want to like reiterate that they are not the same as like a Tarte Chrome Paint Pot or any of that. They are different and they look so beautiful. Just wanted to reiterate because they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. So next up we have spot number two. We have the Miss Congeniality of all the products, if you will. And guys, it is my pleasure and happiness and joy to present you with the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This is the setting powder to end setting powders. Like I, this is, if I had to rank all my setting powders, this would be in probably the top three right here. Not probably, it would be. Because I've bought this, mm, I wanna say three, four, five times now. Like I've repurchased it time and time and time again. And that's, I don't care about anything. Like the look of this on my skin is so beautiful. Um, I can give you some, some points of it if you'd like to know why. It looks beautiful under the eyes and on the face, which for me is like, huh, that almost never happens. Uh, but it looks beautiful in either place. I feel like when I use it to set my entire face, it gives me a beautiful press in and it makes it like, you know, matte and set down, but it's never too matte. Like it always comes back to natural and it never presses too far. Like it's the perfect finish. It's the perfect consistency. It's not thin like Fenty, but it's not thick like a lot of other powders out there that just aren't good. It's the perfect mill to sit in your skin and like press in, help fill in the pores, help smooth you out. You can buff it in, you can press it in and it doesn't matter. It's just, it's, it's perfect. Like I don't, I don't even know how to explain to you that it's that good because I love it that much. Like maybe I'm just a little too close and I need to gain some perspective, but like I don't want to because I love it. It's so good. Um, and I just, I, I don't, I don't even know what else to say. It's amazing. I highly recommend. All right, so it is time. It is time for product one for the coveted place in my hourglass lineup. And I would like to present you <laughs> with the biggest cop out of an answer. And I'm going to say the hourglass pressed powder. Now, <laughs> before you say anything, I'm going to expound on my answer here because yes, these are all included. Um, because I think for me, and you know, all jokes aside, really what I'm getting at here is the hourglass pressed anything is just like, it is the mind-blowing item that Hourglass makes that I have yet to be able to duplicate. It is so unbelievably beautiful. So I'm gonna start off by kind of explaining to you what's in this pile and why, and then I think you might also understand like why they're all in here together. So the first product, or the first thing I wanna say rather, is that a lot of palettes from Hourglass, they make a, they make so many, they discontinue them, you can't get them again. And that would be this guy. This is their metallic strobe lighting kit, and I freaking love this. Their metallic strobe lights, their highlights, they're beautiful, over the top, blinding, amazing highlights, and you can't get this anymore if you could. I'd buy two just because I think they're so beautiful. Hourglass, please hear my plea and come back out with these. This is so amazing. So here they are just like living their best life. Oh my gosh. Oh my 
got my favorite way to wear these was to always mix them together look at that oh my god and i know on camera you're probably just like mm, looks like a highlight like it's not that impressive but i promise you uh, when you apply them to your face you're just like ah, because they sink in and they give you like the mixture of a highlight with a finishing powder it's it's unbelievable and it's blinding and it's oh it's supple and it's so good and i just i highly recommend now i don't know if they still do the metallic ones i've only seen them lately in kits like when they do the six pan kits or this sort of thing so i don't even know if you can get them individually but their metallics are beautiful so moving up a step from that one as i just said it's got more of like a beautiful blinding over the top finish right well if you don't want it to be that over the top and you're like eh, you know let's like let's bring it back a little bit like i like that highlight feel but it doesn't need to be so intense i'd like to introduce you to the next press powder and that would be their ambient strobe lighting powder so again we went from metallic to now we're at strobe lighting and these are so so unbelievably beautiful these i would say i just went ahead and swatched it but you can't really see it anymore because this is one of those products that when you swatch it you're kind of like eh, I, don't, I don't get it but when you put it on your face you're like damn like that's beautiful because this is where to me it's like equal parts of finishing powder meets highlight whereas with the metallic one that we just talked about i would say it was like 80 percent you know blinding highlight and 20 percent finishing powder just enough to make it look beautiful on your skin but still pop this one is like 50 50 where it really comes together meets in the middle and you can use this on like a no makeup makeup day if you want to you know you put on all your stuff but you're like i want a little juice but not too much you can apply just a swipe of this you can build it up and get more of an intense glow not going to hit metallic like they're not going to hit that level but you will hit just a beautiful nice like glowy type finish that you can just build on the high points of your face it looks effortless and then from there let's say you want something that has little to no glow and you want like what i would say is the opposite of that metallic strobe lighting powder i would say i would introduce you to something that is probably 80 percent finishing powder with a 20 percent just like beautiful refinement glow but not a glow that you can see a glow that is not detectable and that would be the ambient lighting powder in ethereal light well this is the shade i'd use it comes in other shades but this is the ambient lighting powder just the plain ambient lighting powder and i love this this is something that i go in with i even used it today while i was filming this video which you will have already seen but when i use this it's because like wow my blush is too much i need to buff that out or hey i have like a matte foundation my face is basically dried down so i need to set it but i can't set it a lot or it's gonna look chunky i can use this i can use this for so many things it doesn't really matter what i need to use it for if it's like a touch up if i'm looking you know um like my skin's looking stressed out whether it's like textures looking emphasized my pores are looking emphasized whatever i can take this and just like buff it into my skin and it has a way because it's it's such a refined feeling and such a refined mill that it goes in and it like fills in all the cracks and crevasses and it just makes your skin look alive and rejuvenated and filtered and fresh and it's so beautiful and then also just for good measure i thought i would go ahead and throw in this is a blush this is in the shade mood exposure and this is the same ambient lighting formula so like i was just talking about with the one that i used to like buff stuff out same type of powder but with color so whether it's this one or you want to try the bronzers i'm fine with either they are all fantastic so seems how i'm already grossly over my time limit and i'm well aware so sorry about that um but the one thing i wanted to mention in this video i didn't put in any palettes whether it was this one the unlocked any of them and i didn't put in a palette specifically because a lot of times these are sold or they sell out and you can't get them again i think this one you still can get this is their um lighting edit ghost palette i don't think that you need it necessarily it's really good like the again the powder products in here aren't bad but out of all of them if i was going to recommend one this wouldn't be it and the ones that i would recommend they don't sell so that's why you didn't see me include any of their their palette products but i do think these are amazing as well because they're literally a culmination of the pressed powders that i said i loved all in one place so i just wanted to put that out there in case you're wondering why i didn't talk about them it's not that they're not good it's just that they're they're kind of hit or miss so with all of that being said you guys like i mentioned leave me all of your thoughts and opinions down below if you haven't checked me out yet on instagram and on twitter they will both be linked down in the description box and of course if you haven't subscribed i would love it if you'd stick around turn on your post notifications because i do put up three new videos a week monday wednesday friday and they go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m my time here in good old northern michigan so subscribe turn on your post notifications and you guys that is it thank you all so so much for watching please don't forget to have a great day night weekend whatever it is when you're watching this and i'll see you in the next one bye oh it can't be good my back just went to 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 poof i don't know what that poof was but it, it did not sound good and all right beautiful people what is that noise
And all right, beautiful people, welcome back. I hope that you guys are all ready to party. <laughs> this is um, for today, I grabbed the shade Smoke, which is one of my fuck. Uh, ooh, I'm supposed to be a bad word. 